Gas. Gas. Oh, well, the camera's on, the little red light's on. I guess we can do this. Hi, I'm Bill, and you're at Real to Real. And this is called Session Time. We have fun with Session Time. We enjoy doing it. Today, we're going to talk about bass strings. Got a call from a fellow who had uh, just done a recording in his home. And uh, we love to work with people who have studios in their homes, and we love to work back and forth like that. It's it's part of what we we, we really feel like we give back to the music community, especially you young guys out there who are just learning how to press buttons. Thank you for calling us. Thank you for asking questions. Anyway, he said, Bill, I just recorded uh, some stuff, and my bass was just squeaky and raunchy and twangy, and I had a lot of just kept ringing forever. I said, uh, well, this is a good opportunity for me to jump right in. So I jumped right in and I found out the following. It seems like this young man had put on brand new round wound strings the night before his session. And yes, he probably did get a lot of raucous sounds, a lot of twang, a lot of his finger noise, and those overtones that we love on round wound strings. However, they're not right for everybody, and new round-wound strings going into a session is a real challenge, even for some of the most prized bass players that we call in to do sessions here. So, I guess for rule number one, if it's a rule to be broken, of course, as all rules are, <laughs> at Real to Real, we bend a lot of rules and we break a lot of rules. So, guys out there, don't put on brand new bass strings to do your recording because you are going to get the squeaky and you're going to get the overtones and the twang. Now what you want to do is use your old old strings, your old strings that are on your bass now. And if they're still tunable, if they're still using the fundamental tune, go ahead and use the old bass strings. You'll be able to get a good clean sound out of those without the finger noise. The um, the thing I want to talk about today are the fact that there are other options out there. Well, we even had a guy come in the studio one day, and he had put on new bass strings, and he went and got a bar of soap and was rubbing soap up and down his new round wound strings up and down the neck to try to cover in the cracks where the winding was to take some of the squeaky finger noise out. That's going way over the top. I've only seen that one time. But let's look at the three options that, that we're going to talk about today. There are some different kinds of strings you need to know about. We're going to talk about round wound strings for bass. We're going to talk about flat wound strings for bass. And we're going to talk about nylon tape wound strings. Round wound strings have a single core. The size of that core, or single string if you will, is dependent upon the pitch that it needs to be tuned to. On top of that is spiraling around that core all the way up another string which is the wrapper and it's another round string so thus we call them round wound strings. These are going to have the most overtone, they're going to have the most uh, sustain to them, they're going to have that um, clank and punch against the frets that some players really love and and they really came back into being around the 19 late 1960s and 70s with some of the English bands uh, roto sounds became all of a sudden the rage everyone wanted roto sound round wound strings and they were throwing their flat wounds in the trash cans well bad news for them is uh, if they'd kept their flat wounds 50 years later they would still sound fine. So those are round wound strings and that's how they're built. The next thing is flat wounds. Well you take a round wound string which has your core, it has your round winding, and then it has a third wrapper which is flat metallic very thin tape made out of metal and it's wound around on top of the winding that is called the round wound. So you take the round wound string and wrap it one more time with some flat wire and you've got what we call flat wounds. Okay? They're very um, very respondent to the fundamental tone. 
They don't have a severe overtone problem or ringing out. They don't have any uh, finger noise. It'll take most of that finger noise totally away for you. And um, you'll, you'll probably be a lot more comfortable with them, particularly you guitar players who are playing bass uh, on your tracks. You'll, you'll probably like them a lot better. Uh, we, we have all kinds here at Real to Real, and we do, you know, we have different basses sitting around with different strings on them just for different players. So uh, just keep that in mind. You've got two options so far, round wounds and flat wounds. Now, let's go to the third option, a nylon tape wound. Okay, we've got the flat wound string, which has a core, a round horizontal wrapping, winding as we call it, then a metal wrapper and winding. Then we're going to add one more winding around on top of that metal out of some type of synthetic nylon tape or something like that. And that seals it up totally. Now those are called nylon tape wound strings. The beauty of those is you get the pure fundamental tone. You don't get much of an overtone at all. The sustain is very short, much like that of a fiddle and an upright bass. If you've got a fretless bass, a fretless electric bass, you're definitely going to want to try a set of the nylon tapes. It'll free you up to do things that you can't do with the other strings. And keep in mind, a round wound string on a fretless bass will leave some marks on your fretboard. Over time, these will bother you because you're wearing your instrument out a little early. The flat wounds and the nylon tape wounds on your fretless bass will not cause you any duress or extra wear and tear. You'll hardly know you've had them on. Uh, you'll love this sound if, if what you're trying to achieve is more of a gut fiddle or a gut bass. Now remember, you can't use the real synthetic nylon or what we call gut strings that are available for bass fiddle because they don't have enough metal in the string itself to break the magnetic field of your electric bass. So we'll talk more about that later because there are some hybrid versions out there for both bass fiddle and electric bass. But today we wanted to just look at electric bass guitar and the three types of strings that you have available. The round wound, the flat wound, and the nylon tape wound. Um, we love to talk about stuff like this, and I hope this has been informative to, to someone out there. Let us hear from you. Uh, you've got our email address. We're at Real to Real Studios in Jonesboro. If you're ever in the neighborhood, come by for a cup of coffee. Uh, it's been fun talking with you, and we'll see you next time on Session Time. <music>